Let's get to the business. Uh, I'm the, so my name is Janne Kallila. I'm here to talk how to grow and manage Drupal organizations. I'll say a few words about the company that I'm working on. Uh, then uh, we pretty quickly move to the topic and talk about the, how to build, grow and maintain Drupal organizations as a Drupal vendor, how to hire talented people, how to grow the experience, how to keep the people, and then as a customer, if you are buying something from a Drupal shop like us, that what, what you should do to execute the projects. So XOX, we are one of the leading Northern European companies specializing in open source. We are located in Helsinki, Tallinn and London, around 60 people now, 45 of those, sort of, 45 are developers, with different roles, there are architects, there are back-end developers, front-end developers, system engineers. QA is a development role in our company. And people that design or are related to design business, so they are design-related project managers on that, that number. And then we have five people that do business and administration. I'm the CEO, and I called it last time, yesterday, we have the hotel to fix a couple of things with the, with the customers, so I, I try to keep my, my hands dirty too. We have really simple approach to projects. We want to understand the customer's business. Then we, then we use our expertise and power of open source, and then we end up with a beautiful functional business driven services. So that's what, that's what we do. So now you know at least in a nutshell where I'm coming from and then let's get to the point. So how to build a Drupal organization as a vendor. And all the things that you do, at least in my opinion, are always, you need to always start from the, from the way you want to go. So what you are actually selling defines pretty much the organization you are, you are going to build. If this is news for somebody that has been building organizations, then now, now it's a good time to act, because uh, there are a number of roles, number of different people that hopefully somehow fit to the roles that you need to employ and utilize. But moving from role to other is sometimes really hard. For example, one of, the, one of the shortest books available is The Stylist Engineer. So most of us that code are never going to be de designers. We just don't have the design item. I personally, I know um, what is good design when I see it, but I don't know why it's good design, how it's good design. But there are people that know it, and they don't know jack about coding. And they never should be coding. So. You need to think the value chain, and this is what we, in Excel, what we think that what is the, uh, how the website or web services uh, is designed and implemented. So there needs to be an idea. Typically, there's a business idea. Sometimes there's a business area. We have had projects that the customer says that we want to enter that area, but we don't know what we are going to do. So ideate with us figure out something that we are going to do and earn the core of the service and then move towards to the deployment. Actually, there is a, like one year later, there is something, something uh, tangible. After the idea becomes uh, perhaps concept, so somebody needs to say that this is the uh, service put in a, in a nutshell, this is the core, these are something that needed, and these, the rest is not needed. That's really Big, big thing that somebody can exclude things that, that that's not important, this is not important. Then on the, the upper track is sort of technical, that the data modeling architecture implementation. So you figure out the technical parts of it. And the lower part is for the visual, so user interface design, visual design, templates. Nowadays, they are merging more and more together. This is old slide from the like 2007, 2006. So with HTML5, JavaScript, uh, different backbone and the other other libraries, these are merging that you can't really 
do a design or implementation in a vacuum, but they need to be done in an isolated fashion. Then there's testing and deployment, and that's it. So if you are a Drupal implementation shop, then of course the <coughs> you need to be good at the architecture implementation templates. Hopefully also testing, nobody writes perfect code, even if they might think that by themselves. You typically need to do deployments. You need to somehow understand data modeling, but then somebody else figures out the concept and user interface visuals. On the other hand, if you are a Drupal design shop, don't you worry, I'll, this will be posted to slide, slide share these slides later. So, if you are a Drupal design shop, then the concept user interface visuals, those are thick, really important things. But you need to understand the Drupal architecture, you need to understand the amount of modules, what is available off the shelf and so forth, that you don't always design to expensive systems. And for all your designers and all the customer designers, you can always rem remind them that the budget can be designed too. So they can have, or the, typically the concept designer, visual designer has the biggest impact on the budget, that how costly this will be. Not the customer, because they, most of the customers are pretty sort of, uh, how to say, uh, nicely. But they, they don't really know that much of the web and the business. They might understand their own business, and that, that's good. Uh, but they are led by the designers and the developers. So the, uh, they are just happy that something gets done with some amount of money. But the designers have the most impact. Unless there's a customer that really thinks that they know and then, then drives you nuts in the process. But uh, for the next time you have a special price for those. <laughs> if you do uh, Drupal consulting, then the, uh, the data modeling architecture is the, is the uh, important thing. And then you need to know something about the concept. Of what is the business drivers? What is the conceptual thing? What are the <coughs> social objects of this site? Where the, where the people come in, why they interact, what they do and so forth. So that then you understand that uh, whether, the da whether the data model is correct, whether the architecture is correct and so forth. For Drupal auditing, it's almost the same, but you need to have a really good testing jobs. We have done a lot of, lot of these cases that there is a customer calling us that they don't know that our system is behaving. That they, typically they start with that and then it means that it's behaving badly, not nicely. And recently it has shown up these kind of symptoms. Or we have had difficulties in inputting images or whatnot. We are now wondering whether it's done right. And then you need to start at what you are going to do with the site, what, what are your goals, how it's built, how it works, and then what, write a report that okay, we success that this, this should be fixed or uh, it's okay that you need just need you actually need more more uh, learning and more uh, education in the sense that you actually know how to use it, or that the uh, it's done plain wrong, or this problem should never be being solved with Drupal. There are a lot of those cases that you should not apply Drupal. In all of those projects we have found that there are, we have sort of split this into three parts. The third one is not shown here, that there are, for example, the CFO of the company doesn't need to understand Drupal at all. I would be a bit scared that if our accounting would understand Drupal, but, uh, but for the most of the technical roles and the project management role, you need to either master Drupal so the architects, the developers, the, the front-end guys, test engineers, system engineers, and all the other technical people need to master Drupal from their own angle. Not that they, everybody knows 100% Drupal, but the system engineer needs to know how Drupal is deployed, what are the deployment options, what are the cloud services available, what are the, the requirements for hosting, and so forth, so forth. And then on the right hand side, the concept designer, visual designers, user interface designers, and all the managers, they need to know how Drupal actually works. It would be best that they would have used it by themselves. That typically opens eyes that, oh, this is so 
ugly. That's the typical uh, reaction that I hear. Uh, that the, uh, this is so powerful is the reaction like six months later when they, when they sort of see the light. But all the managers, all the designers should know what is easy, what is hard, and what is downright impossible with Drupal. Because then these people that actually affect a lot what those people on the left do, guide them so and give them such a process that they are easy and fun to implement. Because that's one of the things that keep the people in the company that they, they actually like what they are doing. And now we sort of have rushed through the jobs that are needed. So next, what kind of people we should hire and how we are going to keep them in the company. The short answer that hire right kind of people. That's always the time. Not, not the wrong kind of people, but the right kind of people. Unfortunately, Drupal experts are really rare breed. In Finland, uh, we are just behind uh, Belarus on the uh, amount of uh, Drupal size per capita. So the, uh, for some reason, it's really hot in Belarus. But uh, we are the next second one, and uh, that has led to a situation that there is not, not that many people available. I guess that the same is same applies to the UK and most of the most of the Western Europe. In Eastern Europe, there seems to be a bit more more of uh, the uh, people available, but that will change when the open source breaks it through and they drop a lot of the old system. like Estonia. It's like five years behind Finland with the Drupal adaptation. They have a lot of homebrewing systems that they are now ditching because they don't make any more sense. And they are taking Drupal and then suddenly there is once again not enough people. So it means that the chance is finding some. So our formula is we hire good people and then we help them to grow Drupal experts. And we split the company roughly in half, not with the, with the, with the amount of people, but the, with the skill set of competences. We are competence set, competence driven company. So the major thing that we give to our people is competence and the salary comes next or maybe third one on the row. Uh, so we have back-end coders and we have front-end coders. We have every single person in, in Excel is a coder in technical role. We don't have anyone without long theoretical and practical knowledge of coding. There are certain reasons for that. And it's a bit different than somebody else might have. But it's our choice, it has worked, us, worked well with us, but it might not work with everybody. So with the PHP, we want to have a good theoretical knowledge and practical experience programming, preferably with several languages. That if you master only PHP, the chances are that you are not a university graduate or then you are not the CES University credit, but you are coming from somewhere else. We hire others at the university credits too, but uh, that's maybe the sweet spot for us. Experience with number of systems is a plus. I'm always afraid of people that have used only one system. If, you, if your only experience with CMS is Drupal, then I suggest that you today go and download Concrete 5 and try it just for the heck of it. It might open some eyes. It's a completely different system in several places way better, in several places way worse, but it's a different take on the same, same problem set. It's also a platform and it's also an MVC compatible system. So check it out, just, just, just for fun of it. Uh, the early experience with LAMP stack is not that really needed. Our best coder used to code in Java and C when he joined us. Learn PHP in two days and then start to be productive. PHP is really simple language. It's, 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 it's really, really simple language compared to the others. The concepts there are not hard. On the front end side, HTML, HTML5, experience working with that. The commercial companies are not the place to learn HTML coding. That should be done somewhere else. Uh, 
if you want to be, if you need to have JavaScript programmers, and I don't mean people that can use jQuery, but actually can write production level code in JavaScript, you need to have really, really good programming skills because it's an excellent language to do a lot of things wrong or right. It, it doesn't limit you anyway, and it's like Lisp in uh, C syntax. And if somebody has programmed Lisp extensively, they know that it's, it's really, really good programming language, but completely different to most of it. And, and JavaScript is like Lisp uh, internally. So, you get good <coughs> front-end coders with jQuery and other experience, or then you get JavaScript programmers that might not be the HTML front-end guys anymore, but they are programmers, they have a theoretical background on, on programming, they just have selected JavaScript as the language of their choice. Then, the other thing is to think that what kind of people, not the competence, but what, what, what kind of people you like to have. People that are fast learners, that's the first and foremost what we think. Everybody says in the, in the interview, by the way, that they are fast learners. Uh, but people, the best people learn with several different ways. They can learn by listening, <coughs> they can learn by doing, reading, discussion, they share the information. They are actively learning and they want to be learning something new every day. If, you, if, they, if I ask in the job interview, that what you, what is your aim in the next two or three years? The best answers for me. So if somebody wants to have a, have a job with me, then then uh, that the, the book answer would be that I want to learn. I want to develop myself to become better in this and that area, so that I could come that and that, and not that yeah. In three years, I would like to be CTO. But develop yourself better to become something not just to become something. You need to be open-minded, flexible. You need to be a flexible thinker that you might be actually wrong or your paradigm that you have been building yourself is actually wrong and then you need to just cope with it and move on. Communicative and friendly. Everybody like friendly guys and they're not too, too over-communicative that, that you just babble all, the, all day, every direction, nobody gets work done. People that know their own limitations and accept them. People typically know their limitations, yes, but they might not accept that, yeah, whatever, I'm still quite good at it. And then you actually are not. And the most important for a vendor is that they have a true will to serve a customer. <coughs> this is something that especially, I don't know, this is probably culture dependent, but the, like in the Asian cultures, they are service oriented. In Finland, and probably in Estonia, those cultures I know best, it's sort of shame to serve somebody else. We are self standing people. So it's hard to find people that would go lengths for the customer for the sake of going length for the customer and not it's because of paid or something else, but it, that it actually comes from the heart. And I want to do good for those people because I want to do good for those people. When you find those people, then keep good handle on them, that, that you can grow them and, and have the experience, because they really change the pace of the, of the organization. People that we avoid, that have a near-to-Europe program experience, the one, there's one uh, guy from Southern Europe that applied for an architecture job, had never coded a single line of code, but has designed a lot of systems. We didn't hire him. Uh, I was, as a, as, a, as a sort of member of a Nordic culture, it was weird for me that I, I couldn't myself say that I would be an architect if I just designed something and never implemented anything. Uh, people that have stopped learning new things and people who, whose best works are behind them. You might not notice them immediately, but sometimes there are people that you get the vibe that actually their best works were done like 10 years ago, 5 years ago, 1 year ago, yesterday, but it's still behind. And then there won't ever be sort of breath of fresh air in the organization. People that don't want to be with any 
relations with the customer sales or somebody else that is not technical or not like-minded. And then people that have <coughs> all solution before they have understood the problem. Drupal is good for this. Why? I don't know. That won't fly. Also, people that solve problems that do not exist can be really hard people to manage. That you that they, they see problem, 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 and they solve them, and the management needs to say that don't solve, don't solve, don't solve, because we don't get money out of solving those problems, and they don't matter to the customer. They don't add or decrease value. They are irrelevant. And then zealous and pessimists. Those people that uh, can't stop talking and can't change topic are really dangerous. And also people that don't believe in the mission of the company. They will drag, the, drag down the energy level of the whole organization I think that doesn't work. I've tried that before, never gonna work, and so forth. Of course, optimists are, optimists are dangerous too. That yeah, yeah, I can do it tomorrow, it's, it's ready, yeah, whatever. And uh, so you need to have the balance, that you need to be realists in a sense. So, now you got the good people in, you have said, seen, okay, these are the guys. So, the growing the experience, there are three things, three things that uh, we have seen valuable. When we have hired fast learners, then we of course need to allow them to learn fast. Fast inductions, fast trainings, not like two week boot camp to get get to be an exovian that that doesn't work, but like that the uh, the uh, this afternoon you will be coding. Before that we showed you the jobs. Here's the computer it's set up. Here's the first repositories. And the, this is our coding standards, and I'm here to sit with you to help you get get the, get through. Start working with real project. If you hire good guys, then have them working with real things first, not something that okay we'll play around as around for a, for a week or so. There needs to be somebody that mentors them, a senior colleague that sits with them and shows, and you can ask help, and then. Gradually, in a week or two, they become more and more independent. You can say, "Okay, you take this task, and then I'm I'm at the uh, at the other room if you need me." And encourage to ask for help. The culture where asking help is a sign of not knowing things and a sign of uh, not being competent enough is really really dangerous because none of us knows everything and it just leads to second guessing. It, it leads that, that, okay, I'll try something out, I'll keep it to myself. I can't say that I made a mistake. These are really dangerous working cultures. Then share information. Be as open as possible. Working pairs when needed, for example, we do assessment in pairs, that there's one guy that does the assessment, the other one that you need to explain. That I do assessment, then I need to explain my assessment to you, and then you say that doesn't make any sense at all, and then I go back to the drawing board. Or you say that have, have you thought of that? That the customer said that there's a good paper, uh, paper, okay, back, and so forth. So the uh, fi find those places where you need more than one uh, pair. No need to expert. That this guy is a JavaScript expert. All job. All complex JavaScript questions go to him, he is the security expert, this is database, this is no SQL expert, and so forth. At the other organization, when you are more than 30 people, you find out that no, everybody doesn't know what the, everybody else is doing, that's the magic limit. So you, then you need to know who is available to help you with certain topics. And the practical has to keep it minimum, there's no point for everybody to learn how to set up Git repositories, there needs to be two guys three guys in the company that can do it, and then you just sort of order that they, they do it quickly, or there's automated script that you go to web page and then you click a button and that's it. But you need to hire good people for these two. All the travel, the, the David Oxmark this morning said that he burned all the tickets instead of claiming their money back. Uh, this, if you have that kind of systems in place, then you are in deep trouble, my friend. The people in for the developers, I have found out that there are two things that keep them and the third thing that makes sure that they don't leave. They are a bit different things. So, meaningful tasks. Have fun with the work. There's variation. That is a 
person, depending on the person, somebody wants to have tracks that he can see three years, I'll go that way, and the other one is bored after one week. Uh, challenges that can be solved, but not immediately. But like, it takes like one week of uh, frustration and all that, and then a huge relief. Ah, uh, okay, I could do it. Enough power and responsibility. That's really important. That some uh, that you are actually, as a coder, responsible of your own work, and also you have the power to change if things go wrong. A lot of possible to learn and develop oneself. We, in Exoe, we want that everybody that comes in in the morning and leaves in the late afternoon, early evening, would be a bit better person every single day. What, how to measure betterness, I don't know, but everybody should feel that I learned something. I developed myself today. Because at the end, all of these places are like Marxist dreams. The people, the workers, they own the production engines that are here in the head and they leave every single day and they don't come back if, if they don't want to. So that's the place where you actually put most of your money. And then make sure that the compensation is on the right level. When, you have, when it's on the right level, it doesn't matter anymore. If it's, not, if it's too low, then the person is always limping because of that. If it's too high, you don't get any boost, you just are throwing money out. And then the last topic, how to build the Drupal organization if you are a customer. Once again, you need to understand what you want to achieve. What do you want to be able to purchase Drupal system? Are you want to execute Drupal based projects? Are you, do you want to maintain Drupal system or you want to develop systems? So, if you are purchasing Drupal, you need to understand roughly when you use Drupal and when you use other systems. That you, it's not the golden hammer, and then every single problem looks like a nail that you just bang on them. Drupal, 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 Drupal. It, it's not like that. You need to know the most suitable Drupal vendors. Typically, they, it's a big task in the sense that there are not that many. Finding them might be hard because we are the best marketers in this community. Uh, might be worth looking uh, across the border and then make sure that when the place well with the other stakeholders and know the fair price for the project otherwise you might be screwed if you want to execute them you need to know what is easy, what is hard and what is downright impossible to Drupal this ensures that you don't pay high fees for low hanging fruits okay, this takes two weeks, somebody clicks on the on the uh, on the uh, some admin interface, the window is done, and now they just sit on it for two weeks. Do something else, and then it will be you. You need to understand how to test and verify Drupal-based sites. That does it actually work? And then always have the possibility to audit the results every single time, because this keeps us vendors in the lead. So there is somebody says, okay, we have the right to audit this. We have the capability to audit with these vendors. And then suddenly everybody sort of sits and stands a bit straighter and the, the, the tie is all in order and so forth. If you want to maintain Drupal system by yourself, then you need to know how Drupal works. You need to understand very well the Drupal admin interface and all the other admin interface you might have. Get training, have the basic <laughs> troubleshooting skills including also LAMP stack, unless it's, it's, it's uh, managed by somebody else that you have managed housing or you have a cloud. And then you need to understand the log files of your systems that when, some, when, when something hits the fan, then you know where to go look at and, and uh, go for it. And if you want to develop then all the things that I mentioned earlier with the, with the Drupal vendors, good LAMP skills, good understanding Drupal workflow, number of modules understood, templating, you need to be able to read code, you need to have QS skills. And the key to success, what we have found out is that the, that the, the working system in an IT project is the key target that you are going to have. It actually needs to work. If it doesn't work, then all the money you have put in every single place in the project is lost, that you have a non-working system. So, 
the implementation render is one of is the most critical part. And if they screw up, then everything is screwed up. So keep them up to date with all the decisions. Let them train other people, typically designers, of the weirdnesses of Drupal to save money. And then never do Drupal templates and HTML in different companies. We have this is we have experienced that many times. Typically, they are rewritten from from scratch. Have enough time for integration and migration. You can even sort of. Uh, double or triple that amount and still be surprised that there were more time. Especially migration is hard. So in the wrap up, if you want to be successful Drupal, know where you're going and then act, act accordingly. Hire right kind of people. Let, allow them to learn, not on their own pace because that's always too slow, but with the company's pace, how to use Drupal. Keep good handle project execution have good people also there. And then if you are a customer, then you need to understand if you can push vendors and ask all the nasty questions that why actually we thought that it would be like this and then the vendor is, yeah, actually it, it's like that. So why this is not working and so forth. So if you have, uh, as a customer, if you have the reputation that you actually know your own things and you know the technology enough that you can ask nasty questions, then you get better service. It's funny that happens, but if the vendor is a bit afraid of the customer in a positive sense, not because they are a-holes or anything, but uh, that they, they, they actually know these things quite well, they do get better service because everybody wants to, wants to avoid the trouble. And then you can demand proper implementation that will fit your business. So that's what I got. Any questions or comments? Anyone? What kind of projects are, is Drupal a really poor choice for? Mm. For example, I would say that the uh, on the CMS side, really really small ones would do WordPress Concrete Five. If you want to have really 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 good admin interface, Concrete Five instead of Drupal. If you have complex multinational, multi-channel. Systems easy publish instead of Drupal. Uh, there are certain certain areas there. Then if you if the CMS functional bit gets in the way that you are actually doing an application, then you might think of the uh, sort of uh, MVC system instead, like Code Igniter, Kohana, uh, Ruby on Rails, Django, others, and then maybe have a simple. Maybe Drupal, maybe WordPress site, just to have the sort of the, the site and infrastructure function. Typically, for example, if you are making a SaaS service, uh, and then uh, and it's it's not related to the where Drupal is really good, like the the uh, community, uh, social these kind of social publishing aspects, but it's like a transactional data management. Uh, then you might have a different CMS or some CMS that has the interaction, the videos, everything, and then you log into application and you are there. Sometimes we wrap up this system that there's a Drupal front end and then there's a coding on the back end, for example, calculating golf scores. Calculating golf scores is really complex, you wouldn't understand if you don't play golf. Uh, but the, uh, for those, there is no benefits of using Drupal because of sake of Drupal, but it's way faster to do it with Node.js or coding either. But you need to know, and that's why you need to have people that know other systems, because within they know that this is relatively stronger in this case compared to that other system. This brings more value to the customer now and in three or five years. Not that just this is a sort of easy task now, and then you are stuck in half a year. But Drupal is very extensible. That's where, the, where it excels. If the customer doesn't really know where they are going in two or three years, Drupal is a really good choice because it probably can take them there. But if they really know that it's there, it's typically too costly if it doesn't fit it really well. And you, as if you have only Drupal experience, you can't know that because your vision is limited then. Any other questions? And you said yourself, you, well, you've obviously got a lot of coding experience, but what, um, how important do you think 
Drupal experiences in more senior management roles. Like for example, the, the person who you, you listed all those different roles, um, but somebody's managing all those people. Yep. How important is, are Drupal skills in the, in the people managing it? Uh, I have found out and I have got also a lot of feedback from my staff that they appreciate that I can code. That that's maybe the first part, that I, I, I can relate to their problems. Uh, it's mostly about coding experience, they can't really bullshit me because uh, I can actually do what, they, what I ask them to do, I could do it by myself too. So that, that helps in a relationship. Uh, but it's not absolutely required. The, the, what, the, what the managers and the especially leaders should have the best thing there is that they can clearly state the vision where we are going to, why we are going ter there and what it takes from us to get there and make the people, sort of mobilize the people. That's the, that's the best asset. Being able to understand the people and their motives helps a lot, but it's not if you are lacking in the people skills, then you are not a good leader ever, and you don't get that much done as compared to a person that 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 uh, doesn't know a jack about Drupal, but is a really good motivator. So once again, depends. For example, our human resource manager does not he has used Drupal and uses Drupal to post the post the all the job openings and these kind of things. So no has gone through the basic Drupal training, will never code has no coding experience, but is still really appreciated in our company because she has about 10 years experience with uh, vendors, human resource management. So the, the, so the industry experience is important, but it doesn't need to be answered. Yeah, that's helpful. Thanks. If we can make the next question the last one, please, because we are running a bit short on time. <laughs> uh, so I guess slightly, slightly off topic, if you're building um, sites or systems in various different technologies, what challenges do you have in supporting those once you've developed them with a team that sort of everyone knows a bit of everything and obviously you've got a load of projects built on different technologies? We tend to have only, or we, we want everybody to master two systems and we make sure that the systems are mastered so that they, they are sort of in between, that there are WordPress experts that know Drupal, there are Drupal experts that know Easy Publish that know and these experts know concrete file and some know, know WordPress and so forth. So that we have mix and match, we can then select the right people if you want to have a sort of face off with the, with the technologies or what, what not. But this comes with the size of the company. We as 60 people, we can, we can say that we have 45 developers, we can say that we have mm -hmm. 25 Drupal experts. We are bigger <coughs> Drupal company than most Drupal companies. We have 35, almost 40 of those people know Drupal. So we can say that we are more experienced than most of the other companies. With WordPress, we have like 10 people that know it. So once again, compared to WordPress companies, we are pretty big. So it's partially the size that helps you. You can't really master a new technology with one guy. You so need in to, a smaller team. Yeah, you, you need, need, you need to have like five people at the end with the different backgrounds that master the same technology. Mm. You can actually say that we are industry proven that we can actually do industry, industry, industrial level services with it and not just hack our way, way through it. And then of course feed the people with the, with the work. With the work, you need to have projects with concrete file for example. Project after project after project. The experience never grows by reading the book alone, but you need to actually apply the experience and then you, then you become an expert. I guess a related question is when you're taking on a new project, do you think about what resources you have or what people you have available to help you design the technology or you, you purely choose the technology and then figure out how you're going to get three uh, we, other team we, members for that project? There are cases that there are two or three systems that would fit the bill. Okay. For yeah. example, Drupal and EasyPublish, they, they, they can do most of the same things for most of the projects, but there are fringes like the, the, the modeling model is way better in, in EasyPublish, the, the social is way better in Drupal. Uh, but we, as, as Exove, we are aggressively customer-friendly company. So we always say what is best for the customer. And if we can't make a competitive offer, then, then, we, then we lose what the customer wins, and they later come back to us. But if we select from our standpoint, they might be pretty pissed off. Or we'll compromise on the... Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the, it, it's always, we, we start, I, I, that's really strong on us. 
uh, that we want to start from the customer perspective always because that's the that's the actually the users that will get value of the system and it would be unfair to them not to make in the best possible way that you can do it. Of course there might be life rate would be excellent for some customers we don't know anything about it, we can't ever propose it. So the customer needs to make their selection also. Okay, so the time time limit we hit that and uh, the it's uh, the pub is calling in a, in, a, <laughs> in a few few minutes or one hour and forty nine minutes. But uh, if you have any questions, I can have a have a chit chat on the on the, on the corridor. But now I thank you for the for your interest, and then I'll upload these slides in the slide share soon, and then you can find on our Twitter page at EXO or on homepage uh, exo.com. The link to those. Thanks. <laughs>